Thank you, Yusuf. Uh, for our fourth speaker is Lindsay uh, Benstead. She's the director of the Middle East Studies Center at Portland State University. And she's speaking on the topic of what explains voter preference in Tunisia's transitional elections. For some reason, we have a preponderance of interest in Tunisia. I wonder why. <laughs> it's great. Thank you, Red Juan and Dahlia, for the invitation, and thank you to everyone who's contributed today, making the day a success. The title of my presentation is What Explains Voter Preferences in Tunisia's Transitional Elections? This project is one within the context of a broader question that has to do with why do Islamist parties succeed electorally, and how do parties consolidate voter bases in transitional contexts? In terms of thinking about why Islamist parties succeed electorally in some contexts, most of the conventional explanations focus on programmatic appeals. There are both those scholars who believe that religious ideology and appealing to citizens' piety explains votes for Islamist parties, as well as those like Tariq Masood who have argued that economic programs explain voters' preferences for Islamist parties. Many observers attribute the rising tide of support for Islamic-oriented parties to religious appeals and citizens' piety. Well, Masood argues that the Egyptian Muslim Brotherhood was successful due to its economic vision, not religious ideology. Yet the role of constituency service and clientelism in explaining support for Islamist parties has not been explored. And this is somewhat surprising given the importance of personal linkages in mobilizing voters in semi-competitive elections, as well as in contexts like Tunisia during the 2010 to 2020 period where the country was transitioning to democracy but uh, had a recent experience with semi-competitive elections. In this paper, I argue that due to its greater organizational capacity, institutionalization and cohesiveness, the newly legalized Anhahta party was more successful than other parties in utilizing clientelistic services to mobilize voters. This is between 2011 and 2014. I will show that Anhahta not only provided more constituency service through the parliament than other parties, but that it was more successful in other, than other parties in translating this constituency service into the consolidation of electoral support. The period that I look at in this paper is from 2011 to 2014. The initial constitutive assembly elections were held in 2011. Um, along with some colleagues, we conducted a survey in 2012. So we were able to ask respondents which party they voted for in 2011 and which party they intended to vote for in 2014. We know from existing literature that Anahda had greater organizational capacity than many other parties during this period. As Anne Wolfe writes in her book, in a period of less than six weeks, Anahda established more than 2,000 party offices, including 24 bureaus in different governorates. In survey research that I conducted with Ellen Lust and Dafer Malouche, our surveys show that Anahda was perceived to be more organizationally capable than other parties when we asked citizens to rate the capabilities of different parties. It follows then that given this organizational capacity, Anahda likely had the ability to interact with constituents and um, if not uh, being able to always be successful in helping citizens with requests that they would make, would at least be able to be more, more responsive than other parties in uh, interacting and listening to uh, citizens. So then there are two competing hypotheses in the paper, the ideology hypothesis and the clientelism hypothesis. The first being that religious voters will be more likely to support a matha than secular voters. And the second, that citizens who benefit from a constituency service linkage with a member of parliament are more likely to support that same party in a subsequent election than those who have not interacted with a member of parliament. 
To test these hypotheses, I use a 2012 original survey conducted among 1,200 Tunisians. It was conducted face to face, and it was a uh, using a PPS uh, sample that was nationally representative with random within household selection. There are two dependent variables. The first, which party did the respondent vote for in the 20, 2011 constituent assembly elections? And the second, which party, as of 2012, does the respondent believe that they will vote for? The results of uh, the survey were quite similar to the actual election results. You can see in this first part of the figure that approximately 40% of the respondents voted for Anahta, uh, while 29% voted for other parties and 31% did not vote. Within a year, 14% said that they planned to vote for Anahta, 16% said they planned to vote for a different party, and 70% said that they hadn't decided yet which party or whether to vote at all. So I ran multinomial logistic regressions, and I included a number of independent variables measured at the individual level, including religious, religiosity, preferences regarding political Islam, whether the respondent had contacted a member of the 2011 Constituent Assembly to ask for help with a problem that their family had, uh, gender, class, rural residence, education level, age, the gender and, and dress style of the interviewer. Um, the descriptive statistics were very interesting when I looked at all of the instances in which a citizen reported that he or she had, between 2011 and 2012, spoken to a member of the Constituent Assembly about a personal um, request that he or she had. I found that 5% of Tunisians contacted an MP between 2011 and 2012. However, despite the fact that Anahta held 37% of the seats in the Assembly, 75% of all requests made to parliamentarians were made to an, an Anahta deputy. So this suggested that Anahta was present in the localities and was more than other parties responsive to citizens regarding the requests that they had. So I ran, again, voter choice, two models of voter choice using multinomial logistic regression and computed predicted probabilities. And I'll just summarize a few brief um, findings with regard to what the, what the voter bases for Anahta looked like in 2011 and one year later in 2012. In 2011, consistently with, I think, our preconceived ideas, those who voted for Anahta in 2011 were of lower classes than middle and upper classes. They tended to live in urban areas. They were religiously practicing in that they reported that they regularly pray. And they tended to hold an Islamist ideology or support for political Islam. <laughs> However, within one year of this initial election, we could see a different voter base starting to crystallize. Um, when asked whether they were decided about how they would vote in the next elections, which ultimately were held in 2014, we can see that what, within one year, there was no uh, impact of religious piety on voter choice. So enough of those decided voters were no longer more religious than those who were not, but they tended to be from all different backgrounds in terms of religiosity. Um, they tended also to be those that said that they had not had um, some kind of a clientelistic linkage under Ben Ali, so they tended to be those that were more marginalized, perhaps, under the previous regime. Um, however, those who had made a request to an Anatha deputy were 45% more likely to say that they were a decided voter. Um, and uh, even though uh, initially in 2011, and the voters tended to be male. By 2012, they tended to be more often female than male, although, although 
the p value on this uh, on gender was at the 0.10 um, level of significance. Um, okay, so in conclusion, I argue that due to its greater organizational capacity, party institutionalization and cohesiveness, and the Anatha Party was more successful than other parties in utilizing constituency service to mobilize voters between 2011 and 2014, contributing to the formation of a nascent voter base for its party. Anatha's use of constituency service also helped mobilize some female voters, while in the past, or in the initial period, its voters tended to be more male. This study suggests the importance of organizational capacity and party capacity as an explanation for party success in transitional cases. Thank you for your attention.